Lesson number four is all about the published rates are negotiable. We're starting to learn that it's a competitive mortgage market all the time and businesses are trying to win their market share and grow their loan book. So if we understand that, and we're obviously in the business of buying a mortgage, we wanna be able to barter. We wanna be able to negotiate. And so the best way to do that is to understand that the advertised rates on websites are just your starting point. Now, of course, if you're dealing with an investment savvy mortgage broker or a mortgage broker in general, they will also be able to reinforce this. I know in our business, um, we effectively disregard um, what's published on websites and we're always looking to do pricing considerations uh, on behalf of our clients. But that is something that you need to understand. If you're going to be talking to a bank direct, um, you also wanna make sure uh, that they're sharpening the pencil where possible, especially if it's new business uh, coming to that particular bank because that's growing their loan book and it's making the executives and hopefully the shareholders happy in terms of that system growth on the loan book. So I will pause now and we'll go over and have a look at um, what we see in, in regards to what, we, what we've got here for, for a lender, right? So here we are on ANZ's website. And so this is their home loan rates. So this is obviously a starting point where you can get to learn more about the way in which um, in, uh, banks operate. And here's probably a good starting point. Now, one of the big things we need to also understand that there's been a lot of additional complexity that has been added to the way in which mortgages operate. If we go back 10 years ago, we just literally had mortgages that were for properties. And so it didn't matter whether you were owner occupier or whether it was for investment purposes, whether it was interest only or principal and interest. But we now start to see pricing, not only on the type of borrowing that you're doing and for the purpose of the borrowing, but we also see it in terms of loan to value ratios. Now loan to value ratios quickly are just the sum of the value of the money against the value of the property. You work out that in a ratio sense. And so the banks are seeing it like this. The lower the risk, meaning the lower the loan to value ratio in terms of then getting their money back, the cheaper that wholesale funding that they're able to access, which means that ultimately they can pass on some of those savings to you as the borrower and also use some of those to increase their net interest margin attached to that. But you see as I play around with this, watch these interest rates change, the comparison rate change. When I switch from home borrower to investor, you can see that there's a premium being charged for investment lending and the same sort of thing. When I move from interest only, there's a premium being paid on interest only versus principal and interest. Now, as someone and a business who does lots of investment lending, um, we have definitely noticed that with our investment interest only lending, that the banks can potentially, depending on the size of the loan, start to do some even better pricing based on that margin. Now, why is that? Well, what they also do know is that investment lending is actually less riskier than home lending. So contrary to what you might think um, in terms of the risks associated inside the financial services markets, most, well, there are obviously 70% are owner occupiers who take out a loan and investors are roughly around 30% of the market. So just on sheer number of um, owner occupiers who take out debt, they're more likely to default on their mortgage through relationship breakdowns and those types of things as well than what an investor may be. Because investors also need to have usually higher incomes to be able to get those borrowings in addition to any debt that they might have on their homes as well. So that just gives you some idea in terms of how we might look at it on a website. And let's go back to some of the things that we wanna learn in regards to that. So we always need to just note that that's our starting point. We wanna see if there's better deals out in the marketplace and we need to ask our lenders, can you give me a better deal? Is that the sharpest rate you can do? Do some of your homework, potentially look at some of those comparison sites as well. Now, the other thing that, I, that is also really important and again, this is from insider knowledge and this is why I wanna share the insider knowledge with you is that we do provide large volumes of loans in excess of potentially $100 million a month that are going into um, some of the lenders that we work with. And so the lenders are telling us that there's a certain type of customer that they would love to have. And that customer looks like this. They have higher than average income, 
They're usually in an industry that has long, uh, you know, longevity, um, also potentially skilled professional type industry. And so they're looking for those types of customers. They're looking for long-term relationships too. Remember, the longer that you hold the loan, the more profitable that loan is to the bank and the, it improves their net interest margin. And the other thing here is, um, which may be new to some people, is the sum, the aggregate of your borrowings with that lender will effectively offer cheaper interest rates. So the greater the borrowing, the bigger the discount you may be getting or the sharper the end true rate the true interest rate that you will be paying. So certainly a fair bit to consider here. And I know that um, there are a lot of people out there who don't like to ask for a better deal. Um, and that is an another good reason why you may be thinking about using a professional to do this work for you as well. But that's the message that publish rates are negotiable. So negotiate away to try and get yourself the best deal. Um, and and I, can, I can't encourage you enough to start to think about that. So thanks for watching that educational session. As you know, I'm passionate about this stuff and I really do want to see you take action. Now, whether you do that yourself, that's fine. But if you do need help, I am super proud of our mortgage team here at Empower Wealth and they would love to help you. They are helping thousands of people every year just like you. They're multi-award winning, we've won customer service awards and national awards for the work that we do. So I know that they will be able to look after you. So leave your details below, but please make sure you do something with this information and knowledge that you've just learned about. Now let's get into the next episode.